Vaping has become a massive problem. Each year, millions of millions of people buy vapes and use them. I hate vaping so much that I think it should be banned everywhere in the world. The vapes themselves, once they're used, are often disposed of incorrectly, in bins or just left on the ground. This can leach harmful chemicals into the soil from the lithium batteries inside them. Many times those lithium batteries could be reused, and that's what we're going to do today. By using a collection of old vapes, we're going to turn them into a power bank. Before we go any further, I do have to make a disclaimer. Lithium batteries are extremely dangerous, so be careful when you're using them. I do not recommend using them unless you have the knowledge and tools to do so safely. I am not responsible for any injuries sustained to your person while working on or following along with this project. All right, let's continue. There are many different types of vapes on the market, and they have many different types of batteries. For safety reasons, I recommend only using 18650s. And in my experience, the best vapes to get 18650s out of are the ones that are rectangular shape. After you get the batteries out, they'll probably have some kind of nickel strip on the end. You want to remove this. Now, there's no easy way of doing it. Some people use a Dremel. I find if it's cheaply made, like a lot of the Chinese ones, it's easier to just pull it off with pliers. Next, take a look for any swollen or damaged cells and dispose of them safely. After doing that, check the voltage of your cells. You're looking for between 3 and 4.2 volts. The next thing, and I cannot stress this enough, only use like cells. You're looking to collect at least 8 batteries for this. Don't worry if it takes some time. In order for me to collect this 8, I had to go through a few vapes. I'm planning to wire these cells in a 4S configuration, which should give me a total voltage of around 15 volts. I'm also planning to wire them with two in parallel to increase the capacity. So in total, this will have a capacity of just under 100 watt hours. So it will still be legal on planes. Disclaimer, do not take this on a plane under any circumstances as you don't know the quality or condition of the cells. The next step then is to join our cells together into a battery. So let's try and get that sorted. Before we can build our battery, it's important that we balance all our cells correctly. Otherwise there will be a sudden inrush of current when we connect them and that can damage the cells or worse cause a fire. Ideally, to do this, you would have an 18650 charger. But if you don't, like me, here's a quick tip on how to do it. Take a piece of nickel and short out the negative sides of your battery. Then, using a 10 ohm resistor, short out the positive sides of your battery. Afterwards, be sure to measure the voltage with a multimeter to ensure that all cells are balanced correctly. Note this process may take some time, so be patient. In order to connect the cells up, you want to use this configuration to make it as compact as possible. These grey bars here are what we're going to use to connect the batteries, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But before we get there, make sure you do hit the subscribe button so that I can keep making these videos. Alright, gotta love a good bit of self-promotion. But in order to join these cells together, you're going to need to get two things. First is a nickel strip, and the second is a spot welder. Now, you can get these quite cheaply online, but don't buy really cheap ones. They don't work. As a general rule of thumb, you're looking for something that can provide at least 150 amps. But, you need to know how to use it. And the correct way to use it is to place the contacts or the electrodes on the nickel strip before applying a current. If you do everything correctly, you should end up with a battery that looks a little something like this, but we can't use it yet 
because without a BMS, it's quite dangerous. Lithium batteries, even brand new ones, discharge at different rates. And this means one cell will hit empty before the others. If we keep trying to discharge, well, you know what happens then. Obviously not ideal, but if we have a BMS in place, as the first cell hits empty, the BMS cuts off the power from the battery, stopping us discharging it any further. Good BMSs, like the one I have here, also have a feature called active balance, which means that it will take the voltage in the higher cells and give it to the lower cells. This basically means that you will get the most out of your battery and keep them as balanced as possible. Unfortunately for us though, BMSs have wires coming off them, and we can't use those wires to connect directly to our battery pack. So I need to solder those wires onto bent pieces of nickel strips, which I can later spot weld into position on our battery. Wiring of the BMS is very important. So let's take a look at what it looks like. We have two voltage ratings for each point. One is the nominal voltage rating. That will be 3.7 volts times the number of cells from the ground. And the other is the fully charged voltage, which is 4.2 volts times the number of cells from ground. You can see here a wiring diagram for this particular battery. Now ours goes around in a circle, but you could imagine if it was linear, it would look like this. We start by wiring ground or zero volts to the flat side of the first set of cells and then 3.7 volts to the positive side of that same set and so on and so forth until we wire all the cells in. Now that our battery is complete, we can start adding the accessories required for a power Mac. I'm going to be using this USB-C charging module as well as this USB PD and QC charge module. This is capable of providing up to 100 watts. It's a great little module and I would recommend it. Unfortunately, we can't simply solder these directly on. We need to make a wiring harness. And the way I'm going to do that is shown on screen now by wiring the positive and negative of the battery into a Y splitter so I can attach it to both this module and the charger. But this charger doesn't automatically switch off, so we will need to have the inclusion of a switch. With all my wiring done, I 3D printed a case, attached them in, and this project is basically complete. And just like that, I've turned something useless and horrible for the environment, like vapes, into a super cool, handy and portable device. Next time I'm out, I can charge my laptop, I can charge my phone, I can charge anything I like off this one device. It has up to 100 watt charging and supports QC 4.0 and PD 3.0. So it can do every charging standard there is. So, next time you're vaping, think. Is it good for the environment or could you be doing something better? those resources.